Hello, I'm Jessica Lally and this is Aussie Wristwatch and today hold on to your seats because I'm so excited we're going to be talking about the Rolex GMT Master 2, the famed Pepsi and more importantly we're going to talk about it in its most famed setting, Magnum PI. But before we get started, do me a favour guys, please hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel. I, I don't really want to beg but I'm begging. <laughs> Help me out with the YouTube gods here. Uh, I'm I'm just a girl talking about the fact that I love watches and doing reviews, a little bit of the history and some famed watches along the way. So please hit the like button and subscribe and let's get going on today's show. Okay. <laughs> In 1980, you this is like this is a little bit of gold. I'm super excited about this. I, I had no idea. I'm a huge film buff. Like, I'm a filmmaker, right? So I should have I should have known this. But in 1980, Steven Spielberg and George Lucas, yep, you know their names, but people didn't really know them back then. They were hard at work casting on a little film they had brewing called Raiders of the Lost Ark. What I bet you probably did not know, and if you did, because I didn't, was that the... <laughs> At the top of their list for the role was a little actor called Tom Selleck. Yep. He had done screen tests, in particular with fellow actor Sean Young, to play the titular role of Indiana Jones. And he was ahead of the pack. He was he was on the list to get the role. Um, I've got some grainy footage here. I'm going to play it. It's not the best quality, but it's pretty fun to watch. It's Tom Selleck sporting a brown leather World War II jacket with a tan fedora and rumour has it he was everything that George Lucas was looking for in the swashbuckling Indiana Jones. Everything seemed on track until Spielberg, now remember Spielberg wasn't huge back then, just kind of on the rise to where he is now. He received a call from the president of CBS. The network had Tom Selleck under contract for a little new series they had on the boil. And apparently Spielberg simply could not have him. Well, <laughs> so the little series was Magnum P.I. And the role, of course, of Indiana Jones went to some other dude. Who are you eating? Harrison Ford. Um, and oddly, the television show seemed like the role that Selleck was born to play. Thomas Magnum. He was the Hawaiian shirt wearing, mustached on man's man of the 1980s and he was iconic and it still remains iconic to this day. The show ran for eight years and Magnum had everything at his disposal. That was of course thanks to the fact that he had this awesome rich benefactor Robin Masters, uh, the novelist with an endless bank account and generosity for his buddy Magnum. This meant our hero spent his days whisking around the island in a Ferrari 308. We all remember that car. Plus his signature Detroit Tigers baseball cap and of course his watch. Thomas Magnum was a watch guy and his watch that he's synonymous with is the Rolex Pepsi GMT Master 16750. Over time it became the symbolic Magnum watch. But this is really important to remember, this wasn't always the watch that Magnum wore. In fact, it didn't appear until the show's fourth season. He basically spent most of the first few seasons wearing a Connor Sport C Quartz 30. And for Seiko heads out there, Magnum occasionally wore a Seiko SQ Quartz Diver with a red and blue bezel, you know, for the times he needed the more dive ready Pepsi watch. So why the GMT? Well, it's perfect, right? For one, the watch matches its capability with the rugged dude and the charm. It's got a bit of whimsy and it's got a bit of colour. It's 100 metres water resistant, dual time watch on a steel bracelet. So it held up well on the surf spray while tracking time back on the mainland. It's the epitome of a tool watch. But the red and blue keeps things from getting too serious because no matter how much, <laughs> no matter how much ass Magnum kicked, and he did it with a smile. Let's forget he also got his butt kicked. But he's a Navy man at heart. So let's focus on the watch. 
there's been a little bit of kerfuffle over the years about what reference uh, for years. Word on the street was the 1675, the classic matte dial variant produced 1959 to 1980 was the watch. Some people believe with a bit more investigation that it's the 1750. Uh, and they say that with some confidence. And that was produced between 1980 to 1988, which also happens to match the series run. Now, the reason the crown, the basically people say it's the 16750 is because the crown guard and, and the order of the hand dials. Um, and they go into a bit of detail about that, but I don't want to go into all that detail right now. Uh, other than to say that it was a versatile watch and it's becoming more clear that it was Magnum's watch. But there's one reason that it rose above all others. And because there's law with this watch. It was actually his father's watch. Yep. In the canon, the Magnum PI Rolex GMT wasn't just a watch. It's an heirloom. It's a keepsake and a momentum memento of his late father, which, of course, is what Rolex watches are all about, right? They're all about handing them down for generations to come. Okay, so in a flashback of the fourth season's premiere episode, we see a young Thomas Magnum swimming in the ocean with his dad. While in the water, his father takes a moment to reference his watch while timing his son's swim. And you can clearly see the GMT 16750 with its matte dial Pepsi bezel and bright white markers. There's no patina on this one. The episode also sadly features the death of his father showing young Thomas performing a military salute at his funeral with the GMT dangling on his tiny little kitty wrist. <clears throat> Look, it's the watch obviously doesn't fit in with the timeline. You know, Magnum was in the 80s. That watch wasn't made to the 80s. But just, you know, it's television and it's Hollywood, so just roll with it. Look, Salik has since gone on the record to say that, you know, he loved that watch. He did refer to it as the 1675. And, you know, out of all the cool props on that show, Ferrari included, it was the Pepsi GMT that he kept. Why not? I mean, if I could keep a prop, I'd be keeping that too. And he said, I've always loved that watch. It was the perfect match for Magnum. It's a watch that likes action. And believe me, I know what I'm talking about. I've had my fair share of sport watches, but never one as tough as the Rolex. It's been underwater, buried in sand, taken I don't know how many knocks, and never a problem. It's called the Pepsi because the bezel colours are the same as the Pepsi logo. Personally, I thought the red went well with the Ferrari and the blue matched Hawaii's Lagoons and Sky. I don't think anyone could have said it better, honestly, so thank you for that, Mr. Selleck. There you have it. One of the coolest television shows, Magnum P.I., sporting one of the coolest watches ever. I mean, I don't have this watch. It's on my list. It's basically impossible to get, partly because of the fame with Magnum P.I. and partly because of the bullshit that goes with trying to get a Rolex. But, you know, setting those things aside, this watch is fucking great and I just love the fact that it's in this show it's it makes an appearance I haven't done any research other than my own personal viewing but it makes an appearance in the new Magnum PI show the remake that's been out for about four seasons now our Magnum on that played by Jay Hernandez wears the watch regularly I'm not going to tell you what model because I haven't delved into that long enough um, there's people out there with more time on their hands who love doing that stuff. So they will tell me, and please tell me in the comments which Pepsi it is. But I have definitely seen it. The only GMT I own is this one on my rich wrist. Um, so I would love to get a Rolex GMT Master 2 one day. And um, what better one really than the Pepsi? Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Remember to hit the like button. Uh, remember to subscribe. Hit the magic red button for me. Help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Please come back for more. But until next time, thank you.